This is the Banny Light by Falcon Multirotors, and this video will walk you through the setup process for Betaflight 3.3 and BL Heli 32. I use the Luminaire Alpha all in one flight controller, which has a built in 4 in 1 ESC. For the complete build guide, find the link in the description to rotorbuilds.com to learn the part lists and the wiring. These are the Lumineer Popo 2206 2450 kV motors. And uh, what makes this frame unique is the stack screws are independent of the arms, allowing for quick arm swaps. The Popo motors use a spring loaded bearing system to hold the props in place. You need special props, but there's uh, the added convenience of quick removal and quick attachment. Here I managed to get them off and back on again in about 30 seconds. Here's how to bind the X light to an XM plus receiver. First, long press right, then short press right. Press up a few times until you see the B and D option. Center press, and now you can prepare your receiver. You can hold the bind button down by putting a rubber band around your tweezers. Center press the joystick to put your transmitter into bind mode and plug in your battery. Now you should be bound. You can double check by removing the tweezers and plugging the battery back in. If you see a green light on the receiver, you're ready to go. Now let's flash the firmware and configure the flight controller. Open Beta Flight Configurator and click Firmware Flasher. Choose Lux F4 OSD and the latest release. Press Load Firmware Online. And then flash firmware. Now you can connect and configure the ports. First, choose Serial RX under UART 1 and select IRC Tramp under UART 6. Now let's move on to the configuration tab. You can choose D Shot 1200 as this uses BL Heli 32 ESCs, but it's not really necessary. If you have any twitches or tuning issues, then try D Shot 600 as it's more mature. Now, reversing the motors is optional. I like to fly props out because I've got a lot of trees in my area. This helps the quad push away from the tree rather than bore into it. Since we're running an F4 board, we can run both the gyro and the fid loop at 8 kilohertz. And if you follow the build guide, then you'll want to rotate the flight controller by setting the yaw degrees to 90. If you're running FR Sky, then choose Serial Based and S Bus. If you leave the accelerometer enabled, you should set the maximum arm angle to at least 180. This will let you arm, if you're stuck in a tree, to hopefully wiggle loose. Now enable air mode, anti-gravity, and the dynamic filter. You can also enable the D-Shot beacon to help you find your quad. Now click save and reboot. Now you need to assign your motor positions. Since we rotated the board, you'll need to go to the command line interface and paste the resource commands found in the description. Be sure to type save and the board will reboot. Now let's plug in a battery and test the motors. Go to the motors tab, click the safety toggle, and power up each motor to make sure they're in the proper positions. Now is a good time to determine the motor rotations. Just turn them on very lightly and feel each motor to figure out if they're going the right direction or not. Next you want to open BL Heli Suite 32. With the battery still connected, click connect and flash the firmware for each of the ESCs. I made the mistake of overwriting the motor direction of each motor, 
So to go back and double check the rotations, just say no when you're asked to write the current settings to each ESC. After the firmware updates are complete, change the motor direction where necessary and update the PWM frequency to 48 kilohertz for each ESC. One nice thing about BL Heli 32 is you can set a custom boot chime. Search for Rock's Wolf on YouTube. He's got all sorts of BL Heli 32 musical chimes to choose from. You just need to copy and paste a series of notes for each of your motors. Set gen length to 15 and gen interval to 0 for each motor as well. And here's the result. Now let's configure the transmitter. You'll notice the stick range is between 987 and 2011. This can be fixed with the RX range command at the CLI. So just type RX range 0987-2011, then RX range 1, and so on until RX range 3. This will ensure your inputs always start at 1000 and end at 2000. Type save and come back to your receiver tab and you should see proper ranges. Now is a good time to trim each of your inputs to make sure they stabilize at 1500. Now let's go to the modes tab and set your arm switch. You can set another switch to the D-Shot beacon as well as the flip over on crash. Be sure to click save and make sure your switches are working. Finally, go to the OSD tab and feel free to set this however you'd like. And if you set your craft name to show up on the OSD, then make sure you set it on the configuration tab. Now you're basically ready to fly, but um, I always like to make some adjustments on the PID tuning page. I'll always set my rates, and this is completely personal. It's up to whatever you'd like. Um, these are my personal rates. Now, this is for a little more advanced users, but um, I'll usually turn off all the notch filters, set the uh, D-term low pass to PT1, and enable the stage 2 filter by going to the command line interface and uh, setting a uh, hertz setting for it. A good starting value is uh, 150. I like to use an external display to adjust the camera settings. So what I've got here is a little seven inch display hooked up to a 2S LiPo, and the camera is powered by a Fat Shark battery. Um, mainly what I want to do here is uh, disable the Run Cam OSD. You do this by holding up on the joystick and um, disabling each of the OSD options. So here's my PIDs after a number of packs, and I think I've got a pretty good tune out of this. So let's see some flight footage. 